Hey everybody, today we're going to talk about restores and there's a lot to cover here not because of complexity but because of all the different variations based off of backup type and how your system's configured. A lot of this will be covered in the overview but if you're here for a specific reason you want to learn about offline or online specifically or you need the 40,000 foot view go ahead and look at the descriptions box below. It's going to have a bunch of timestamps that will take you to exactly where you need. You ready? There's a lot to cover, so let's go ahead and go to the overview. Before we go to the command line, I just want to show you what a restore of an offline backup buys you. We covered this briefly in the previous episode, specifically the top right where we're talking about circular logging. Although you are seeing work come in and out throughout the whole day, your inserts, your updates, deletes, it is constantly recording in this circular log everything that's going on. However, it's constantly writing over itself. It's only keeping what it needs to maintain that initial integrity. But you kick off a backup at midnight. This captures everything up to midnight. It's almost like a snapshot at a point in time. It does not keep any record of what's going on after midnight. So if you have data corruption at 4 o'clock in the morning, and ideally you would want to get to 3.59 a.m., you can't. The best you can do with an offline backup with circular logging is get to that midnight point in time. It's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just a limitation for this type of backup and restore. It is what it is. So let's go to the command line and I'll show you how to do this. So restoring an offline backup is the simpler of the two between offline backup, online backup. However, it will behave differently depending on which system you have set up. If you have circular logging in place, so you can only do offline backups, the response you'll get when you restore is slightly different than if you have a system that is capable of doing online backups but you chose an offline and that's one thing that I wanted to point out that I didn't mention in the last episode if you configure your database to support online backups it's not either or it's you have the capability of doing both so let's take a look at what I have here db2 get dbcfg for sample and then I'm gonna grep for the log settings All right log arc meth one is set to off and we can only do offline backups so let's see what do we have we have multiple backups here let's make sure the one i think is the proper backup is truly an offline backup so it's that special command i showed you in the last last episode db2 ck bkp we want to look at the header file of this backup here and you will see that it is an offline backup good we know it's the third one in an ls minus l so what state is the database in sample is active there are no connections but it's active so before we do a restore or anything else everybody has to be off the system and this is when you tell your developers to get off you go to your system admin and say bring down the app because i'm going to issue this db2 force applications all that's gonna bump everybody off now that everybody's off we need to bring down the database to do the restore DB2 deactivate database sample and it's down now the restore command is pretty simple it's DB2 restore database sample from and you can either use a period if you're in the directory or refer to it directly db2fs slash backups and then we are going to say taken at and we're going to copy this timestamp which basically says I know there are three backups there go use this one if that is the only backup in the file system, you don't need this taken at. And then you hit go. 
Now it's going to stop you and say you're about to restore over a database that exists. Are you sure? Yes. Once you hit yes, it's going to go through and it is going to restore the database from the backup to the specific point in time you have, which should take just a second here. Okay, it's done. Now I can issue a DB2 activate database sample. Database is online. There we go. So that is the restore of an offline backup in a circular logging system only. No archival logging. Let me show you how this changes when we have archive logging in play. So let me show you the difference with what you'll be prompted with if you are restoring an offline backup on a system that's capable of doing online backups. So this configuration is a little different. If you notice, my log arc meth one is set. So I have archive logging on. And I have an offline backup. And I'll confirm that with this. So it's that DB2 CKBKP-H. Let me make sure this is the one with the offline backup. Yes, okay. So let's see what happens when I restore this one. DB2 restore database sample from db2fs backups taken at taken at here's our timestamp if I can grab it there we go go and it's gonna give me the same warning we're gonna go ahead and restore but when I try to activate it I'm going to get something a little bit different. Come on, let's go. All right, what happens when I activate it? DB2 activate database sample. Last time we did this, it went ahead and started. But it's going to come back and tell me, mm, I left it in roll forward pending in case there are some logs that you want to play to get to a specific point in time. That's not the case. We're just going to say, hey, stop. Don't do it anymore. So it's db2 restore data. Pardon me. It's roll forward. The command is roll forward. Roll forward database sample. And you just say stop. Don't do it anymore. Just close the unit of work you were trying to do. It'll sit there and go, all right, I know you don't want to roll forward anymore. I don't need to worry about logs. Let me wrap up what I'm doing. And it will give you your last committed transaction. This is what you look at and say, hey, this is where we restored to, but notice it's in UTC, so you may have to do some conversion. Now, DB2, activate database sample. There we go. So, same offline backup behaving differently on two different systems. One is set up for circular logging, one is set up for archive logging. Now, when you have an online backup and you want to get to a specific point in time, you can. This is a very similar system to what we had previously. We have our unit of work coming in and out throughout the day. We take our backup at midnight. But if you notice in the top right, we're going back to the archive logging system that I discussed, where we are constantly writing down what we do. And after the log is not needed anymore, it's moved off to an archive file system for reference later. So in this specific case, if we take a backup to midnight and we restore that online backup to midnight and we have the logs lying around, we can start applying logs one at a time up to and stopping just before our corrupt data at four o'clock. Now, one thing I want to point out here is I keep talking about doing this with an online backup. It could be done with an offline backup as well as long as you have archive logging in place to go get the logs you need to apply up to the point in time. The key is having that archive logging. All right, you ready? Let's go to the command line and I'll show you how we restore an online backup or get to that point in time. So there are three variations of an online backup. You want to restore an online backup just to when the backup ended. 
you want to restore the online backup and then move forward to a specific point in time just before corruption. Or you need to restore your backup, but you know your logs are corrupted and you need to extract the log that's held within your backup. So let's take these each one at a time. To restore to the end of backup is pretty easy. I'm going to go through the commands here. You already know to shut things down and you already know how to tell if this is an online backup and you know how to tell if your system is configured for an online backup. So let's roll just into the command. So I have three backups here. The last one is an online backup. To restore from it is almost identical to what we were doing before. Restore database sample from db2fs backups taken at here's our timestamp again same command right it's going to warn me you're going to rewrite over your old database we're going to go ahead and little let it do that but when it's done we're doing a command that's very similar to the roll forward stop we are saying roll forward to the end of backup and stop not just stop what you're doing so if we try to activate we're gonna have the same issue we had before no you're in roll forward pending I'm assuming you want to get to a specific point in time we're going to say DB2 roll forward database sample to end of backup and stop this is going to play your backup and go get the one log it needs to get to the point where the backup had just stopped so it's pulling the log it needs from your active or archive log directly applying it and stopping the backup so very similar to what we did before but you have a slight variation in the command to end of backup and stop now restoring to a point in time is very similar to what we just did unfortunately because of how my system is currently configured I really can't show you the example all the way through but I can at least show you the command now what I want to point out is I'm going to end up using a specific time but this backup here was taken on 0130 January 30th of 2018 and in UTC it was at 103 let's say I want to get to 230 which would be 1430 let me show you that command it would be DB2 restore pardon me at this point we we have already restored so it's roll forward database sample 2 now this is the format I need to do for my timestamp we're going 2018 to January 30th and we want to go to 1430 in zero seconds and zero milliseconds one two three four five six and then we would end up tap tacking and stop which says roll forward to this point and go ahead and stop what you're doing I want to point something out here if you are on Eastern Time or Central Time or something like that you're gonna want to put using local time and stop otherwise it's going to assume UTC and it's going to knock you out of whack so commands very similar to what we were doing before with the roll forward we're just specifying a timestamp and what I wanted to point out because this will get you is use local time the last bit I want to show you is how to extract the last log you need to get to the end of your backup if your logs are corrupt on the system so when we've been doing this roll forward to specific points in time or roll forward to end a backup and stop it's actually going out to your logging file system and grabbing the log it needs to finish its unit of work if you have a crash and corruption and you don't have access to that you need to extract the log file from the backup file before you apply it to do that it's two or three different switches so 
I'm going to use my online backup, which is the last one here on the bottom, and it's going to be DB2 restore database sample from db2fs backups taken at we need to specify the time and we're going to specify log target and we or what I normally do is I dump it in the same backup directory so I know it's what I extracted db2fs backups when I do this, it's going to do the restore, but it's also going to yank out the log it needs and plop it in this directory that I'm using. So it's going to tell you I am doing the backup operation. I'm not going to see that last part until it's complete. So the restore took a little bit longer because it had to extract that log. But if I look, notice where it says node 0000. That's the log it extracted. Let me just show you what I mean. So if I dug down into it, you see the log? That's the log it needs to apply to get to the end of backup. If you've corrupted your logs in your archive log directory, you don't have the option to roll forward. You're just going to roll forward to end of backup. So let me get back to my main file system and the command I'm going to use for my ref my roll forward is db2 roll forward database sample to end of backup because that's all I can do and stop but go look here overflow log path that says don't go use the normal file systems you're used to go to the place that I'm specifying now and it's db2fs backups. It will go to this file system and then start driving down that node directory. Now it's applying the one log it needs to get to the end of that backup and complete we get our last committed transaction. So that's it. We've covered all the various different combinations we can do with an online backup from getting to the end of your backup and stopping to getting to a point in time and going and getting the log we need to restore. Hopefully you found this useful. This is just the tip of what you can do with restores. We haven't even talked about redirected restores or how we use different storage types. This is just the basics. There's a lot more you can do, but we'll show that in another episode.